How are we doing today, guys? Sam and Mike here with your weekly fish report. Mike, we got a ton of stuff in front of us because there's a ton of things going on out there. A ton of fish to be caught. Oh, absolutely. So, starting up here north of the bridge, that's where most of the highest concentrations of fish have been as far as rockfish, which is, uh -huh. seems to be what everybody's going after. There's many ways to approach it. You can live line for them, you can set up and chum, you can do all that kind of stuff. But jigging has really been the hot ticket because these fish are moving relatively quickly this time of month, or this time of year. There's a lot of bait in the water, so they're chasing things around. So they're not really staying pinpoint. So having the ability to move versatilely with jigs and whatnot is typically gonna be your best bet. Um, so where are some of the places you've been here? Honestly, anywhere north of the bridge. So Love Point, Colchester, Rock Hall, that whole bite has been happening really good right now. Um, like Sam says, live lining, jigging. Um, if you go out to try to catch spot, you can try to catch spot. If you don't, always bring some plastic. You definitely having success jigging. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, with the bigger baits, a lot of people like to buy the four and five inch baits, but the seven and eight inch um, profile baits are what you want right now. So as you can see, the Z-Man Spirits XL is a big profile bait. And now you don't have to use just Z-Man. We like to. The Bust and Bait Fat Boys work really well. You can get even a 10 inch BKD and trim it up and make it a little bit smaller, but thicker profile. Um, all these different um, bigger profile baits is what you wanna go with this time of year. Um, especially because they're eating spot, you're eating some bigger spot, you can definitely have some good success. Um, what have you found for uh, weight of jig heads? So, so I mean, it, it changes all the time here on the bay. I mean, we have tides, we have currents, all that kind of stuff. I'm always prepared with three jigs, especially in the summer months. Half ounce, three quarter ounce, and one ounce. And I'm gonna change those throughout the day, or hopefully if I brought enough rods, I'll have one rigged up so I don't have to change it. But you're gonna have to mess with it. Uh, typically speaking, how I determine the size of my jig head is I should be able to have, turn the motor off on a flat calm drift. I should be able to tr cast the lure out about 30 feet from the boat. I should be able to sink to the bottom and I should be able to detect bottom contact and I should be able to work that jig through the water column. If I'm trying to, and the jig keeps hitting the ground, I got too heavy of a jig. If I cast it out there and I can't feel the bottom at all, well, I don't have enough weight on my jig. So I'm gonna size it up like that. But typically speaking, we're fishing in 25 to 30 feet of water. Most of the time, in summer months, low current, you're getting away with half ounce to a three quarter ounce jig. Now, as far as um, the bridge, people have been catching fish at the bridge. They haven't been huge, but if you definitely want like a sure bet to go catch fish, you can go catch them at the bridge, whether it be yeah. perch, rockfish, um, things like that. Uh, always go around the pilings, typically when it's first incoming or outgoing, not when it's f full swing, because then mm -hmm. you need insanely heavy <laughs> safety, even, or the boat, you want to be able to keep the boat near the pilings. Cause. You're going to catch small fish, but if you keep with it, uh, there's plenty of, you know, 20 inch fish to be caught there. You just got to keep with it a little bit throughout the day. Um, but shallow water fishing has been good too. Mm -hmm. So speckled trout, been phenomenal from everything I've heard. Oh yeah, everything a um, little bit south, all the way down to Solomon's. Uh, throwing, what I've had most success on and what I've heard is the white, more natural patterns. Like we have this diesel minnow and the slam shady. It's one of my go-to all-time favorite colors, as well as the beer run. They're similar, but with a little bit of difference. Um, typically a three-eighths to four, uh, with a four-aught hook. Um, if you're going out of the minnows, you can go with the 3H with the three-aught hook, um, but it just all depends on the bait profile. But like I said, um, typically the four-inch diesel minnow has been great. I've been definitely going with the Procure Shutter Crab, that thing. That's the, like, that really does make a difference. I sure. have bottles and bottles when I go fishing, and I lather it up all the time. That definitely makes a difference between catching fish and not catching fish, personally. I think the best part about the Pro Cure in general for me is how long the fish holds on to the bait. It gives me a lot more time. If you're out there and it's 98 degrees, you're fishing all day, your reaction time is a little slow. So, <laughs> ha ha having, a, yeah, having a little extra something on there to keep those fish glued onto the bait can't hurt anything, right? And that n doesn't work just for rockfish and trout mm -hmm. and all that. Honestly, really underrated, perch. Oh, yeah. I these especially with these perch pounders you put a little blood worm or the trophy perch um super gel and it stays in that rubber skirt like mm -hmm. it, re cause it really sticks to rubber especially in this skirt um it works really well i've even put it on the sabikis and done really well as well as these um these live and shot shiners um here and jig at the bridge and call it spot and perch Speaking of that, there's been a lot of perch being caught at the Bay Bridge around mm -hmm. the pilings. Every piling's different, but they are catching some decent white perch. Um, you can tip them with minnows, grass shrimp, blood worms. Honestly, I put them bare naked like that and put that super gel in the hair and done really well. With, um, and just tie it like a little half ounce to three quarter ounce 
sinker and then just bounce yeah. it in on the bottom. It's true, Same guys. Perch are everywhere. <laughs> they can be caught in all the river systems, hard bottom out on the main part of the bay. They're everywhere. And I know one of the things we've been doing a little bit lately is taking some of these bustum stingers, tipping them onto our Hayabusa Chesapeake Sabikis. Jigging those over hard bottom is really hard to beat. Another thing I found the other day with the Chesapeake Sabiki when I was down on the, the dock to go right before I went fishing on my boat, I just had a Chesapeake Sabiki laying there and I had no weight on it. And all I did was pitch it out super light and just kind of twitch it in shallow water. And I was catching them on the Chesapeake Sabiki with no weight in shallow water. So there's many ways to fish those. And I'm sure if you added a little weight behind that, it'd be even better to fish in the shallows. But yeah, perch are in the shallows. They're being caught regularly. Um, all the rivers they have there's some being out on like the main points of the main bay but there aren't fully there they're what they should be um spot i know i've heard some reports of people out um in front of the mouth of magathy in front of sandy point just bounces the beakies catching spot to then go up north and live, live line mm -hmm. that's been doing really well there's a lot of spot out there um as far as cobia there are some cobia being caught down on virginia waters down towards the tunnel um Give it another couple of weeks, I guarantee with this warmer uh, weather, we'll have them start moving up like they have been in the past few years up towards the target ship, things like that. Um, and then Mapro should be here before mm -hmm. you know it. So, so quick, quick touch on the Cobia. Now, I don't know, I know we don't have any jigs up here, but what are you typically fishing for those? Typically, I'm throwing a um, one to two ounce bucktail, um, or honestly, even throwing these bigger Z Man Streak XLs on a um, like a one or two ounce uh, or one and a half or two ounce GI um, anything with a really stout hook throwing it out if you sight for sight fishing if you want to chum for them anchor up put out a bunch of chum um, and cut bunker and even some uh, blue crabs cutting blue crabs and half either whether it be peeler soft crabs or hard crabs of course they have to be legal mm -hmm. um, and then cut them in half and throw those put a big um, hook through the hard part and toss them out and they love them same thing with the big red drum yeah big red drummer down there um, people have been catching them um jigging as well as chunking for them um so that's another really effective way to catch the cobia trout mm -hmm. or cobia um redfish and stuff like that well heading out of the deep water pushing it in the shallow water snake hits uh it hasn't been phenomenal but i've heard it's been better this week than it has the past two or three weeks with mm -hmm. their spawn going on there's fish to be caught um, your typical areas up the parts of the river systems on the west side and the east side all of those hold snake heads now um, there's no secret to the bait they're fishing. I bet that lure there has probably caught more snakehead than anything else. Well, oh, when you think of snakehead, you think of chatterbaits. Throwing those around grass lines, um, debris, things like that. Almost like you're bass fishing, but you're in the middle of a swamp if you're in black water and catching um, these snakes. Uh, top water, I haven't really heard heating up too, too much right now, but I'm sure I would definitely have a top water. If I went yeah. down there, I would definitely have a top water rod set up just because... There's nothing better than having a big snake hit the top water lure. Yeah, that's just absolutely exhilarating. Um, you don't. You can fish these straight or put a plastic on it. Personally, I prefer plastics. Yeah. That's what I. That bigger profile, I feel like, almost it triggers a strike when it comes to the snakeheads. What I think happens, at least for me, and the reason I fish trailers a lot is. This thing is coming through the water, that blade pulls the fish into me. That's my idea of it. And then when they get up to it, now they see the actual bait. But before, they're just looking at that blade because that's what they can see from the farthest away point. They can feel the vibration. They feel that, they come over to it, they inspect it. If I don't have a trailer on here, I miss a lot more fish, I find. And I think it's because they're going after the blade. But when I add a bulkier bait to it, now they have something to single in on and eat. That's my idea behind the trailer and why I'm always going to have a trailer on from fishing on chatterbait swim jig anything of that nature let's head over to crabs it's great it's been great it's I've been, been really eating crabs just about every week because i've been catching <laughs> them every week no that's no joke um the crabbing has been really good um in certain areas a lot of the um a lot of the eastern shores been really good it's like compton creek um the y has been really good uh Tread. The Tread Avon, any of these, uh, even the Magathy is starting to heat, heat yeah. up. I know that always takes a little bit longer than like mm -hmm. the Severn or South River, but Magathy's finally heating up. Um, go catch some crabs, uh, pull pots. Uh, I found that the razor crabs still are out doing chicken necks. It's just the way it is it's, for some reason. Yeah. They, they absolutely, I mean, you, not saying you can't catch them on like salted eel, mm -hmm. um, chicken necks or anything like that, but the razor crabs definitely. And, and if you can't get out there on a boat and run a trout line and pull some traps, Handlining is still say, a ton if you of fun. A couple dozen crabs? Yeah. I know you've been handlining and catching yeah. a couple dozen crabs just about every night. Like, yeah, it's it's fun. It's, and if you only need a dozen crabs, you just yeah. head on down to your community dock or whatever you got and 
chicken eggs and some rope. That's, that's all you need. need. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for stopping by and come on by and check us out this weekend. Thank you and have a good one. Thank you.